Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. I'm doing this second counter battle to Abu Ismail and he's actually responded to our video. As you know, Abu Ismail is an apostate. He's come back to Christianity from Islam and he's making videos against Muslims, Quran, Hadith and things like this. Uh, so he's made a response and this is my counter response to him uh, about Islamic fire torture. Now remember, in our initial video, we were addressing Abu Ismail on the topic that the Prophet Muhammad ordered the burning of Muslims who don't come to the mosque. Now, we completely debunked his points and asked him to show evidence when he could not show evidence. Uh, he obviously made a second video pertaining to evidence, and this is why this is a counter response to his claims. Now, I'm not going to post everything he uh, said in the, in the video. You can go and watch his video. And what I'm going to do is just uh, break down his arguments. And that's why this is a second counter battle to his points. Now, Abu Ismail made the claim that the Prophet Muhammad did himself burn people with fire because we Muslims went to his page and asked him for the evidence, right? Because we showed him, because he was making the claim that Muslims don't think it was literal because Muhammad didn't go ahead himself to, to do the burning and so forth uh, but uh, of those Muslims. So then he brought a new video up showing how through various hadiths, Muhammad, in fact, did in get involved in the burning process himself. But you will see in his video how he already went on the ropes. Um, <laughs> it, it's amazing how hypocritical and how dishonest these missionaries are. He actually quotes a hadith where Ali radiallahu branded people. This is the fourth caliph of Islam. He tortured people with fire and he was using Ali as an authority. He also quoted a hadith in Sahih Bukhari and he used Buk al Tabari where the Prophet Muhammad also did burning of uh, people he didn't like and so forth. But do you notice how he actually shifted the goalposts? We asked Abu Ismail because his first initial video was about Muslims being burnt because they didn't come to the mosques. For prayer, Abu Ismail, instead of bringing the evidence where Prophet Muhammad burnt those Muslims who didn't come to the prayer, he shifted the goalpost and he brought a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad actually burnt infidels, meaning non-Muslims who were advocating war, which was in the context of war. He was fighting non-Muslims, such as if whether it was Jews or Christians. It wasn't in reference to Muslims. So why the dishonesty, Abu Ismail? Why did you then move the goalposts and instead of bringing evidence where the Prophet Muhammad literally burnt Muslims who did not come to the mosque for not praying, you then brought a hadith where it wasn't about Muslims, burning Muslims. It was evidence in regards to burning non-Muslims. So again, you've proved to be dishonest and bankrupt. And you can see how you've been refuted on this point. So now you've changed the goalposts. So since he's changed the goalposts, and now he wants to argue the Prophet Muhammad burning infidels, but notice, and, and these infidels, it was in the context of all. These are people who committed treachery and were fighting against the Muslims. So it's not just innocent people. So anyway, so since he wants to change the goalposts and now move from burning Muslims, which he got refuted on, to infidels, the very same Abu Ismail actually admits in another narration in the Hadith where even the Prophet forbade that practice of burning the infidels using Allah's punishment, right? And then he calls it a contradiction, <laughs> So why is it a contradiction? You believe as a Christian in your New Testament that certain laws were abrogated. You know, where the Old Testament God would kill men, women and children in wars. But in the New Testament, he would later forbade these practices. Do you see that as a contradiction now? Do you, Abu Ismail? Well, then he brings up Ali Radiallan because he says, 
there's a contradiction now because he's trying to say there's a contradiction in the hadith because Ali radiallahu anh followed the Prophet Muhammad's behavior in killing infidels with using Allah's punishment and the fire. However, we pointed to Abu Ismail, regardless if uh, Ali radiallahu anh is the fourth khilafah of Islam, he can make mistakes. And sure, he did follow the Prophet Muhammad in burning infidels, but he forgot to follow the Prophet where the Prophet actually later forbade this teaching. And in the context of war, Ali radiallahu can simply forget to follow the law where the Prophet later forbade that teaching. Right? It doesn't mean just because you're a khilafah, you're 100% knowledgeable. No, that would make you a prophet, right? He's, Ali radiallahu is not a prophet of God and khilafahs can make mistakes. In fact, even the first Hilafa Abu Bakr, it is narrated that he even used to make mistakes. For example, there's a hadith that mentions that a companion walked into, into the room of uh, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq, and Abu Siddiq was holding on to his tongue, really holding on to his tongue, and he was crying. And the Sahaba companion asked him, you know, why are you doing that? And he said that, my tongue has, has, you know, made me in error. Like, it's, this is the reason what has given me wrong judgment and he's made certain errors and so forth and he feared his tongue. So just because you're a khilafa, it doesn't mean you can't make mistakes. The only person that can't make a mistake is Allah and the Prophet Muhammad who rules by the book of Allah. And that's what Ibn Abbas did. Ibn Abbas, who's a close companion of the Prophet, also, not just Ali Radian, a close companion of the Prophet Ibn Abbas, who actually tried to correct Ali Radian and say, I wouldn't have done that. Because obviously Ibn Abbas remembered that hadith where the Prophet later forbade that teaching of even burning infidels. Furthermore, when it is said to follow the rightly guided hadith, it is to follow the rightly guided hadith if he is ruling by the Qur'an and the Sunnah. If Ali radiallahu is ruling by the Qur'an and Sunnah, of course we follow him all the way as our khilafah. But if Ali radiallahu turns around and says, you can eat pork chops now, do we now follow Ali radiallahu do we? If it's disobeying Allah and the Rasul. Yes, we are told to follow the rightly guided khilafahs, but in a general sense. And here's another point. Abu Ismail actually breaks another premise, and that is going to the highest authority for judgment. He blames the Muslims that we shouldn't be going to Ibn Abbas because Ali radiallahu is actually higher in position than Ibn Abbas because he's a khilafah. But what Abu Ismail is forgetting is that the Prophet Muhammad is higher than both Ibn Abbas and Ali radiallahu So why is Abu Ismail being inconsistent by breaking his own premise of authority. Ali Radiallahu is not a prophet of God. Ibn Abbas is not a prophet of God, but the prophet Muhammad is a prophet of God. So he accuses Muslims for going to a less of an authority like Ibn Abbas, but he himself goes to a less of an authority, which is Ali Radiallahu compared to the prophet Muhammad. So in conclusion, what have we learned here? We've learned that Abu Ismail is being a double-faced hypocrite and inconsistent in his argument sayings. He refers to Ali Radiallahu as an authority, but rejects the authority of the Prophet Muhammad, who himself admits changed the law. Abu Ismail, secondly, in his initial video, claimed that Muslims are to be burnt for not coming to the mosques. He actually changed his premise when we asked him to bring a single example where this actual fire punishment took place. He then changed the goalpost and not only could he not show where Muslims were burnt, he changed the goalpost and showed where the Prophet Muhammad was burning infidels, which is completely different than burning Muslims. He then admitted that the Prophet Muhammad forbade this teaching later on. So then he appealed to Ali radiallahu 
But then we have shown that this is inconsistent again because he criticized Ibn Abbas being less than Ali radiallahu But of course, Ali radiallahu is actually less than the Prophet Muhammad. When Ibn Ismail understood that his arguments were inconsistent and wrong and he understood this out of frustration, you know what he said towards the end of his video? He said, oh well, even if there's difference of opinion here and there and even if there are contradictions, Muhammad still killed apostates. So notice he shifts the goalpost three times now. He understood he was wrong and he refuted his own argument. He then no longer could resort to Muslims using fire as punishment and them being warmongering people, unpeaceful people. He then resorted to his last argument, Muslims kill apostates anyway. For that, I would say, refer to my video below this video and you will see how we Muslims have proved that even Jesus himself will kill infidels in his second coming. I mean, this man calls himself a Christian, yet Jesus himself will kill and torture and burn infidels in his second coming. So... This man is a hypocrite. He should leave Christianity altogether and adopt atheism. Again, please refer to my video below this video. So my personal opinion is if the Prophet Muhammad was living at the time of Ali Radiallam when he was a Khilafah and Ibn Abbas was there, the Prophet Muhammad would have sided with Ibn Abbas and said, look, uh, you've made uh, an error here. You need to fix up your error. And you know what's even more interesting? Ali Radiallan in the very same hadith didn't even object to Ibn Abbas's opinion to say Ibn Abbas wouldn't have done that. You know, we don't see this negotiation back and forth taking place between Ibn Abbas and Ali Radiallan. In fact, if the Prophet Muhammad was trying to judge between Ibn Abbas and Ali, the Prophet Muhammad would have reminded Ali that we have no longer put that punishment on to infidels using Allah's punishment with fire. And Khilafahs can be corrected. When we say they are the rightly guided, we are talking about in the general sense. We don't mean that they are rightly guided in the sense that they are inspired by God and everything that they do is 100% and it, there's no error. Of course, they're human beings and they can make errors in their judgments. That's why they're khilafahs and not prophets. You know, if you claim that Ali radiallahu anh, can never make a mistake, then you're putting him in the same position as the Prophet Muhammad. You're making him like a prophet who does not make mistakes in religion. Of course, Khilafahs can make mistakes in their judgments. They may forget things, they may make errors in certain fatwas and so forth. It can happen. And to claim that they are free from this is actually claiming like Elder Billah, like they're, they're a, you know, they have a wahi directly from Allah, like their divine inspiration that they receive. And then when nothing else adds up for Abu Ismail, he then refers to Google search engine where he's showing some Islam Q&A websites which are actually affirming to torture and burn people in certain circumstances. Again, that's not scholarly work uh, uh, to, to resort to such methods such as Islam Q&A, some website that he just quoted. Uh, but, you know, even if that is the case, who is he referring to? He's actually referring to less authoritative people in our modern age and so forth who are making such claims. So he rejects Ibn Abbas and he goes even lower down the track to show that some imam in our scholarly world is making fatwa. We could show scholars who actually dispute that. So again, he refers to less authoritative people even in his own statement. So yes, Abu Ismail, in conclusion, is a hypocrite. He is full of m mischief, distortion, and dishonesty, he has been proven to be a false preacher. When asked for evidence, he changes the goalposts. And that's evidence in this video. And even if he does, he's still being debunked. Thank you very much for listening. Please stay tuned for more videos.